Size matters. Listen, as we jump in, I want to explain one thing. We're going to talk about drumsticks today, and we're going to talk about drumstick forces. This isn't a technique video, but I'm going to use this crazy thing, a dynamometer. We're going to look at a bunch of different drumsticks, and we're going to talk about how you hit the drum and the forces of the drum to make sure, one, you get the most performance out of your drumsticks, and two, you absolutely never get injured. This will be scientifically jam-packed. Check this out. Choosing the right drumstick is extremely important. And in most cases, I will say this, it is genre specific and also you specific. If you're gonna play jazz, this is colloquial to know that a 7A drumstick probably is gonna be a heck of a lot better than a Harvey Thompson marching drumstick. This drumstick is huge and heavy and it's gonna be really, really difficult to orchestrate the jazz ride patterns in the way that you want. Not always true and there's always an exception to the rule, but truth is, that's kind of colloquial. We kind of all know that. And there are people way smarter and way more musical than me to talk about that. What I want to talk to you about is actually drumstick forces. There is this thing that we inherently do as drummers. We play using these sticks and we use momentum, inertia, and rotational inertia, and so much kinetic force to actually help the drumstick continue to do work without us doing too much work. Many drummers have talked about having good technique, which is such a subjective qualitative thing. The truth is it's not necessarily good technique or bad technique. I would rather say an efficient technique. German, American, French grip, all those traditional, all those are fine options. But here's what we really need to make sure is happening. We need to make sure that as the drumstick is doing its thing, that it is getting out of our way and we are getting out of its way so we can orchestrate the patterns that we want. Enough of that. Here's the deal. You have joint motion and you have skeletal muscle. The combination of these two things help to produce angular displacement, which helps you move and really move a drumstick how you want. This is where we have the option for wrist stroke style, style things and finger stroke style things, okay? I think we kind of get that. This is a dynamometer and this is actually, it's a scale if you will, it's like a luggage scale on steroids. And what it does is it measures the net force reaction between whatever is touching this input pad and here. So when I hit this pad here, if you actually can see the number on there, if I hit this, you'll see that that goes up to 48.4. And so that number is the peak force, the highest amount of force, because there's only one stroke that happened at this point. For this to be perfect, I need to not move and the drumstick needs to hit it in the right way at the right spot without any sort of shift. So I will say this is a botchy qualitative experiment, but I do want you to see today how interestingly different strokes and different sticks gives you different numbers of force. Now for some of you, this will probably be obvious, but I'll say you, I gotta say I have done this experiment a couple different times and I actually have a book. We went through a bunch of different drumsticks and different types of strokes, really, really interesting. Let's start off. We have a 7A drumstick. I have my Hagrid Vic Firth chewed up beaver chomped 55A freestyle drumstick. I have a classic 2B drumstick. And then I've got a marching drumstick with this beautiful burnt wood by Promark. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do uh, two different types of strokes. I'm going to do kind of like a finger style stroke and then I'm going to do a wrist stroke. And then we're going to talk about the implications of this to make sure that you never get injured with this. So I'm gonna just zero down. So now it's back down to zero. So I've got the 7A drumstick. Let's try and see what kind of forces we get when we do these two different types of strokes. So quickly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a finger bouncing stroke where I'm just gonna let the stick do its thing and then I'm gonna do a much harder wrist stroke. And so quickly, if I do a few taps with just my finger, nothing fancy there, uh, we can see that we are 12.2 LBF. Now this number might not mean anything to you, but you'll see as we start building this up that there's a heck of a lot more force that happens with one drumstick compared to the other. This 12.2 doesn't really mean anything yet, but let's stack a little more info on it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, if I were gonna do a big rim shot style stroke, hit it pretty hard, 26.8. So we go from 12.2 to 26.8 with a harder stroke. So it just shows that how much force you put into it absolutely is going to have some interesting reactions on your end. Now quickly, these numbers again, don't really mean anything, but 
right yet without context. But think of it this way. If you go to the gym and you were going to do a bicep curl, a wrist curl, or some form of other exercise, and you grabbed a 26.8 dumbbell, called a 30 pound or 25 pound dumbbell, you can imagine how tired you would get quickly. Well, that's how much force is happening when this stick hits that thing and pushes back into you. So the truth now is we have a choice, and this is where making sure your wrist never get injured is so important, is if I hit this with that same vigor, I can either let the drumstick shoot back and absorb some of that force and have the stick, the wood, the material absorb that force and my hand kind of let it shoot back so I don't take all that force into my wrist or I can choke this thing and hit it and what ends up happening when I choke it, that entire 26.8 pounds still shoots into my wrist and that means that the drumstick, that vibration goes into my hand and my wrist and the skeletal muscle all takes that frequency, that energy and it dissipates through my body which can be fine. But if you're playing a set, a long gig, that's gonna be a lot of impact. And so this is where allowing the drumstick to do its thing is super key. Cool. Let's try a different drumstick. Let's try my beaver chomp stick and see what we get. So same thing, tapping this lightly. Excellent. 19.2, so heavier drumstick, obviously more impact even with the lightest stroke with the finger stroke. And if I do that big wrist stroke, 26, interesting enough. So the way that I hit it with the 7A and this 55A freestyle actually got the almost exact same LBF. Very interesting to see that number shift. Cool. Let's see how much it goes up with the 2B. Finger stroke again. 17.3. So we can see that as the stick gets heavier, incrementally there's more force, which I find really interesting. So this is a 2B that was a 55A. And if I do the same like assaulting style stroke, 32.1. So we're slowly seeing with no surprise that each drumstick has incrementally more force that goes into the body because of the weight of the stick. Now, let's go to this gigantic monster, this Harvey Thompson Ralph Nader Promark burnt scorch stick that is extremely heavy. Definitely going to get me pretty tired, but let's see what happens. Same thing with the finger stroke. 26.7. So interesting, the finger stroke of this heavy stick is now as heavy as the heaviest stroke of the 7A. Very interesting. And then now the assaulting stroke. 41.7. So here's the interesting thing that this dynamometer is showing us. It's probably corroborating your thought process already that heavier sticks have more force and lighter sticks have less force. Now, what becomes very interesting is for you at your strength level and hand size, each one of these sticks might be really easy for you or very difficult for you. Like for example, I don't have gigantic hands. So something for me like this marching drumstick feels quite large and cumbersome. Now I am relatively strong compared to some of my other drumming peers. So I probably could muscle my way through it, but I don't have as much material on my hand covering the stick. So it means I'd have to work skeletal muscle wise much harder and probably would fatigue, which means that muscle wise, I would be much more susceptible to a repetitive strain injury, cramping issues or anything like that. And in fact, Truth is, I played a large drumstick like this for years. Uh, I won't say it was an artist model. It was gigantic and white, if you know who I'm talking about. And I worked at it really hard, and it helped me get really, really fast, but it actually like, damaged the back of my wrist. I was so obsessed with playing the biggest sticks I could control and white sticks so I could do all this spinning stuff. It actually beat up my wrist. So here's how we can use this information a little bit more practically. Heavier sticks have more mass. More mass means more inertia, and that means as this thing moves, it will want to continue to do what it's going to do unless it's obstructed. Thank you, Newton's laws. So if I'm doing something like this where I'm letting the stick just bounce, to be honest, even though the stick is quite large and cumbersome, it does not take that much work for me to maintain this specific cadence because the stick itself is doing a lot of the work and I can literally just bounce it at one small point with my fingers. And of course, I've practiced this, so it's relatively easy for me. And we're still getting, even at that light level, 26.4 LBF. If I go to a much lighter drumstick, even though it might be better for my hand... It's actually a little tougher to maintain the bounce and also maintain it at a medium to high level volume because it has less mass to it. So this is where the length of the stick and the mass of the stick 
all make a gigantic difference. Longer sticks, this, this is why actually why I like the freestyle drumsticks by Vic Firth is because they're longer. And so you get more rotational inertia. So I don't need a heavy stick to get a lot of power. I use the 55A, it's a medium stick. But for me, this gives me everything I need to play relatively consistently, relatively loud, and if I want to hit it pretty hard, I can because I've got that distance and it fits into my hand really nicely. So here are some broad recommendations for you. Go to your local drum shop and find some drumsticks that you like. Pick a bunch of different sizes and try different weight proportions where the weight is heavier in your hand and the weight is heavier at the taper. Then go over to a practice pad and try to find which stick feels like it's doing the least amount of stress to your body. It is letting you move the most natural possible and really gets out of your way. All of these sticks are fantastic options. We have to recognize heavier and thicker sticks are going to put more force into us, which can be kind of tough. And then if we find a stick like this, like this 55A is a big chomper, beaver chomper, but it gets out of my way. And it lets me do what I want to do. And I've never had an injury, ache, or pain that has ever slowed me down. Anyway, I hope this little bit of dynamometer information was practical for you drummers. At the end of the day, there are a bunch of incredible technique videos and choices, uh, conversations around which sticks you can use. But truth is, what we have to really recognize is whatever stick we're going to use is going to have health implications on us long term and short term. These gigantic beaver, these gigantic pieces of tree, I should say, uh, could definitely beat you up in a pretty big way if you're not respecting the stick and you don't have the actual material, so to speak, to tolerate it. While something that is a little longer and a little bit more natural fitting might work really well for you. But here's the thing. You're also different, different preferences, different music. Go to the drum shop, practice with some sticks and find the stick that gets out of your way.